Hemsley Winfield and Family, Buried in an Unmarked Grave, by Dr. Nelson Neal. At the end of the Depression, after Hemsley Winfield died, a letter from his mother stated they did not have enough money to pay for a photograph that Martinez Anderson had taken of him, which begs the question of how they could afford to have their son buried in the Oakland Cemetery. The plot in the cemetery where his remains are interred has only one headstone, with the name Philip C. Bush, April 12, 1855 to December 31, 1894, honest, faithful, loving. According to the cemetery records, there are 12 people buried in this plot in Section 3, Lot 224, including Hemsley Winfield, his father and mother, and his maternal grandmother and grandfather. The list of known relatives of Hemsley Winfield and the years they were buried in this plot includes Winifred Winfield, 1905, Mary Hemsley, 1913, William Hemsley, 1915, Hemsley Winfield, 1934, Osborne Winfield, 1950, and Geraldine Winfield, 1966. William and Mary Hemsley were his maternal grandparents. Geraldine and Osborne were his parents, and Winifred Winfield was his aunt. The first burial in the plot was for Philip C. Bush in 1895. He died at age 39 and had worked for the Rockefellers of New York. According to two obituaries, Philip Bush had been a domestic servant for John D. Rockefeller for 17 years. He was the coachman who drove the carriage for Mr. Rockefeller. A year before Philip Bush's death, at age 39, while driving the Rockefeller carriage, he saved Mr. Edward Moore, a rich Florida orange grower whose horses were running away. Mr. Bush jumped from his carriage and caught and stopped Mr. Moore's horses just before they reached a bluff, saving Mr. Moore, his wife, and their two children. Mary E. Hemsley, Nee Bush, like Philip Bush, also had a relationship with the Rockefeller family. I haven't found the relationship between Philip Bush and Mary Bush Hemsley. However, she may have been Philip's older sister, since she was born ten years before him, or she may have been his cousin. Philip Bush was never married. Mary E. Hemsley came to Yonkers with her husband and family in 1879. They lived at 27 Wolf Street, across the street from her daughter Geraldine Hemsley Winfield and husband Osborne D. Winfield and her grandson Hemsley. She was a member of the Abyssinian Baptist Church of New York City and later with the AME Zion Church of Yonkers. Coincidentally, Hemsley Winfield's dance company had performed at both of those churches a number of times. She leaves to mourn her loss not only relatives and dear friends, but influential and wealthy friends in Yonkers and New York. Among them are Mr. and Mrs. William Rockefeller, who gave her the beautiful plot in Oakland Cemetery where her remains will be interred. The Hemsleys and the Winfields were notable black families living in Yonkers. Geraldine Hemsley Winfield, his mother, was an RN for over 50 years. She attended Hampton Institute and St. Paul's Institute in Virginia. She became a registered nurse in 1902 after graduating from Lincoln Hospital in New York City and worked in home nursing. She also taught home nursing under the auspices of the American Red Cross. She founded and conducted the Susan B. Anthony Association for 15 years, an institution for colored women and girls affiliated with the Civic Betterment Societies of the city. The club also promoted interest among the young Negro women of the city in the arts, trades, and domestic sciences, and to assist the members to become self-supporting. In 1919, she was appointed as one of the three colored instructors for the American Red Cross. In 1931, members of the North Harlem Red Cross unit raised $100 to install a window in the new Red Cross building in recognition of Mrs. Winfield. As chairman of the chapter of the North Harlem Red Cross unit, 
She also authored the Red Cross notes for the New York Age newspaper. Geraldine Winfield was also a playwright. She wrote at least three plays, The Princess and the Black Cat, De Promised Land, and Wade into Water. Wade into Water is the only play that has a copyright. The setting of the three acts was in Georgia in 1885 and portrays the injustice meted out to the Negro by whites at the time. Hemsley acted in, sang, danced, and directed this play at two New York radio stations and in six more theaters. The play was extremely popular and his theater and dance groups performed and danced in it at least 16 times between 1929 and 1933. Her play, De Promised Land, was performed at Carnegie Hall May 27, 1930, and was sponsored by the National Negro Pageant Association of Chicago. Hemsley choreographed Life and Death, a modern interpretive dance for the play, which was a year before he created his modern dance company. Typed descriptions for the stage direction and the movements of the dancers in Life and Death can be found in his biography. Hemsley Winfield's grandfather, William T.S. Hemsley, was a delegate for the Afro-American Protective Club of Yonkers to the State Convention of Republican Leagues that was held in Rochester, Minnesota in 1892. His grandfather came to Yonkers as a nurse to Colonel B. W. Blanchard. When Geraldine received her RN degree, she worked with her father for a short time. In 1888, he opened a barber shop at 24 Irving Place, which he continued until paralysis of his hands disabled him. Mr. Hemsley combined nursing with his barber business and had been employed as such in some of the wealthy families in the city. Osborne D. Winfield, Hemsley's father, was a partner in the firm of Winfield and Franklin General Contractors Incorporated with an office and garage on Sackett Street, Brooklyn, and employing hundreds of men. He had also been employed by the old Ritter Conley Steel Company of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hemsley Winfield and his family members had many wealthy and influential friends who supported him and his dance company. Other supporters were Ruth St. Dennis, Augusta Savage, Agnes Thorpe, Richard Sylvester, Eugene O'Neill, Lawrence Tibbet, and many more. It's time to have a grave marker for Hemsley Winfield. <laughs>